Hi guys, welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and webdesignandtechtips.com. Well, this is another in our series of Divi for Beginners videos. And today we're going to be looking at the Divi scroll effects. They're inbuilt. I've got some examples here. They're a little bit extreme for demo purposes. But if I scroll down this page, see a little spaceship appear. It's floating all over the place. If I scroll back up, it'll come back in. If you stop, it's going to stop where it is. You can hover over it, click on the button if you want. It's just one little example. If I keep scrolling down, I've got some little social media icons fading in at the bottom there. When they get to the top of the page, they'll fade out. And yet again, if you stop where they are, you can just hover over them, do your thing. Scrolling on down a little bit more, we've just got some hover boxes there. Again, they're just scaling in. They're starting off small and they're growing. And then when they go out the top, they're going to disappear out again. And coming up after that, we've got some blur effects going on on some little call to action modules there. If we roll down a little bit further, we've got some pricing tables in that will slide in from the side. They'll stay in the middle for a little while. You can do your thing on them. And if we roll down, they get a slide off the left hand side there. And at the bottom, I've just got a simple email opt in form that's fading in there. When it rolls up the top, it's going to fade out. And of course, if you slide back up the page, they're going to come in and do their things. In the opposite direction, obviously. Now, I don't know if that spaceship looks smooth to you when it's rolling around, but it is pretty smooth. I don't know if my screen recording software is going to make that a little, little bit glitchy, but it's a really nice little smooth effect. So let's show you a few of these. I've got a new page over here. Let's call it whatever you want to call yours. And of course, we're going to use the Divi Builder for this today. I'm going to build from scratch. I'm just going to put a single column in for this little demo. And let's just use a call to action module. I'm just going to put a link in so there's a button that appears there. As you can see, once you put a link in, your call to action button will turn up. I'm going to leave that just like that. Let's make this section a lot deeper so we've got a bit of scroll room. So I'm going to go into the section. I'm going to make it 200 viewable height in the sizing. I'm going over to design, going to go to sizing, height. I'm going to make it 200 VH. And what that'll do, it'll make it twice the depth of whatever screen you're looking at it on. So we've actually got some scrolling room here. I'm also going to give this a bit of padding so it's down the bottom here. Back in design, spacing. I'm going to give it padding top of 100 viewable height. That will push it just off the bottom of the page there. Great. If we scroll down, now there it is. Fantastic. Well, let's take a look at some of our little scroll effects. Now you can do this with any module, dark tab, any row, and even a section if you want to, the blue tab. I'm going to go into the module for this today. And if we go over to advanced, that's where you'll find scroll effects in all of these. Let's just dock this to the left hand side, make this a little bit easier to see. And you've got vertical motion, you've got horizontal motion, fading in and out, scaling up and down, rotating and blur effects. And you can combine several of these, which is what I did with that little spaceship thing in the first one. So let's take it down to the bottom there. Let's perhaps start with a simple fade. There's our fading in and out. Hit the little switch to enable it. And already you can see it's fading out at the bottom there. It's fading in, it's staying in at the top. We've got a little sort of timeline type thing here. The left hand side is the bottom of your viewport, whatever screen you're looking at it, right down here. Right hand side is the top, right up here. And in the middle, obviously, is in the middle. And you can decide what percent of the fade, it's actually opacity, you want at each of these stages. So let's start off with zero, like it is at the moment, invisible. Then we'll have it 100% visible when it gets halfway up the page. Let's make it invisible again when it gets to the top. Simply put a zero in there, it'll put the percentage. So when I roll up now, it'll disappear again reappear and disappear. 
but you can also have it stay visible for a certain amount of time. For instance, we've got these little arrows either side here. Let's say we want it visible from 30% up the screen. Just drag it, left click, hold it and drag it to where you want. And we want it to stay visible all the way up to say 60%. So now it's going to be invisible and it's going to fade in quicker. And it's going to stay there till 60% up the screen. So it can be fully visible. When it gets to 60 or past 60, it's going to start disappearing up the top there. And of course you can combine these with other things. Now let's combine it perhaps with a bit of horizontal motion. Enable horizontal motion. Hit the little switch again. Same little timeline. And you've got positive and negative values. If we roll down, positive values are to the right hand side. And roll up, negative values are to the left hand side. And the higher the value you put it, the higher the value you put in there, the bigger the effect that's going to be. So if I was to give that a 10, and minus 10. You'll see it's starting off way over there and rolling up to the top over there. If I do it with the bar, it'll be a bit smoother for you. And again, if you want it to stay put at some particular point, you can stretch out. We'll do the same 30 and 60 perhaps. Now, if I scroll down, it's still going to start off coming in from the right hand side, but it's going to stop, stay there until it gets up to 60%. Then it's going to disappear out that side. And if we make that 20, it really is going to come in way over to the right hand side and go out way over to the left hand side. If I roll that back down, shooting in from the right hand side, it's going to stay there. It's going to shoot out to the left hand side there. Like I say, that's pretty extreme, but you get the idea. Let's change that to perhaps five. And of course, if you want to combine another one, we can make it bigger or smaller with the scale up and down and exactly the same thing. Let's have it invisible, basically 0% when it starts out and 0% at the top. And again, because everything else is there, let's have this static at 30 to 60. Now, if we roll down, it's tiny, it's rolling in, staying the size it is, 60%, it's going to start shrinking back down, zoom over to the right there. I'm sure you get the idea. And our little, you can rotate it if you want to, I'm sure that's self explanatory, I won't do that. But if you want to, you can also blur it out. So let's turn the fade off. And we'll go over to the blur here. We'll enable it. As you can see, it's blurred out already. The higher the pixel value with blur, the more blurred it is. So let's start off at 20. Be very blurred, as you can see there. And again, They've got a bit of a spread there. I'm going to take mine back down to all the others, which is the 30, 60, which is fine. And then let's have it blur back out at the top. And it's really blurred up there. It's coming in. It's going to be fully visible at 60%, down to 30%. And it's going to blur back out when we go down the bottom there. And of course, these are very extreme examples, but I'm sure you get the idea. Now, if you decide, well, I want it to be 60%, but I want it to put blur immediately. It gets to 61% and higher. You can drag the viewport top down. Let's put that at 70%. And also viewport bottom, if you want to blur it out all the way till it gets clear or pretty close, let's put that at 20% perhaps. You can drag these. I'm doing exactly the same thing. Left click and move. Now if we go down to the bottom. I'll do this slowly. It's going to come in really blurred. As you can see there, really blurred. As soon as it gets up to its 30%. It's going to come in clear. It's going to stay clear to 60%. As soon as it gets past 60%, or well, actually to 70% there, it's going to get very blurred again, just like that. So there's several options of using it right there. You can move these things around. 
let's just move that back. And for anybody that wanted to know how I did that spaceship thing, where was it? Over here. Let's just take that back at the top. I'm sure you figured most of it out at the moment, where it comes in, goes up and shoots off the other side. Bring it down here. Also had a little effect where you roll over it. It doesn't matter where it is. If you roll over it, you can still hit that little button there. Very easy to do for anybody that's interested. In fact, I'm going to use that same call to action. So I'm going to go in. We go to the text. Just keep a title, I guess. Put in whatever you want on yours. Click here is fine for the button. If you want to change that, that's fine. I'm not going to have any content. But I am going to have a link. Obviously, you have to have a link if you want the button to show up. And you can put it to take people wherever you want. I've just got a hashtag in for a placeholder. If you want the whole module to link somewhere, you can put a link in here. doesn't matter if it's the same link. Just that way, anywhere they click on the module itself, not just the button, it'll take them to that URL. Great. Well, I'm going to take that background color away. Just down below, we're still under the content in call to action. I'm going to roll over the color, get rid of it. And let's just undock this. So we've got a whole page to deal with here. Okay, I'm going to save this now, and I'm going to go actually into the row. I'm going to save my call action settings. I'm going to go into the row. I've only got one column, so I can do this in the row. If you've got more than one column, you can do it in the, each column. I'm going to do mine in the row. Green tab for the row. Under the content, always find background. I'm going to add the image that I want behind there. Got color, gradient, image. Take a look at our backgrounds video. You can do some crazy things with backgrounds. I'm going to add the background image by hitting the plus there. There's that little transparent PNG spaceship I had. And upload it. Now roll down just a little bit. I'm going to have it fit background image size to fit whatever size I've got going on there. That's more of a manageable size for me, and you can make it bigger or smaller by resizing the row. And that's what we're going to do in a minute. Still under background i'm going to put a background color in here just so you can see what i'm going to do next let's chuck a blue in there so we got this whole row and it's way too wide i don't want this going up over everything because it may affect things that you might want to click on or something so i'm going to make this row pretty much the same size as our little ufo fellow right there to do that go into design sizing here's the width right here I think from memory that's about 600 pixels wide, so I'm going to put 600 px. Got to put the px there because if you don't, it'll put in a percentage. If it does, just select the percentage and put px in there. Great. Well, that's about right. I'm not too bothered about the padding top and bottom, so we can take that little background away again now. Back over in content, background, color. Just hit the little trash can when you hover over it. Great. Well, that works fairly well great well i'm happy with the row let's get out of here we'll go back into our module i don't want to see the button or where it says ufos there until they hover over it so let's go into the module dark tab for the module if you've seen any of our hover effects videos i'm sure you know what i'm going to do next i'm going to go into design i'm going to roll down to filters i'm going to roll down some more till i find one called opacity I'm going to roll up over the dark writing of the one that I want to affect, which is opacity. And common to all Divi modules, if you roll up over the dark writing, you'll see some little icons appear. I'm going to go to opacity. I'm going to click the little arrow. That'll enable us to have two different values. One on desktop when the mouse is normal on it. I don't want to see it. So I'm going to drag the opacity all the way down to the left there. Gone. But when they put their mouse over it, I want it to come back in. So I'm going to drag that all the way up to the right. Time it takes to go from one to the other is 300 milliseconds with Divi, which is pretty quick. I want to slow it down for a bit of drama. And you can always do that in all sections, rows and modules over in the advanced tab in transitions. There's the default 300 mils. Let's make it twice that. You can type in a value, you can slide, you can increment up with the little arrows there too. Don't want any delay, want it to happen as soon as their mouse hits it. Speed curve I like to use for this is ease in out. That's my go-to for my horror effects. 
Great. Let's just go back into design, flip it back to non-hover. That should disappear. Great. Now if I scroll up and down, we just need to give it some little scroll effects. But let's go into the row itself and I'll enable the hover effects on the row. I'm going to go to the advanced, down to scroll effects. Here we are. Let's have some horizontal motion. I'm going to enable it. Let's start off crazy. You see it's going to disappear down there. And we'll do the negative at the other end. So it's going to come in and it's going to shoot off the other side there. And again, if you want it to be stable or in the same place for a little while, I'll do my 3060. It's going to stay there for a little while, then shoot off. When you roll down, stay there, and then shoot off again. Fantastic. The only other thing I applied to that was a bit of scale. I made it smaller when it came in and when it went out. So let's have it perhaps 20%, then 100%. Again, I'll do my 30 to 60. And when it goes out, let's have it say 40%. Now when I roll down or up, it's going to start off down there. It's going to grow bigger. It's going to stay same size. It's going to roll off to that side. Let's even make it smaller than that. Let's make that 10. And then 20. Just to exaggerate it a little bit more. Obviously, you fix yours how you want. There we go. It's growing, it's staying, and it's going to shoot off and disappear. Now, of course, if you put a nice little parallax image in the back of there, you can get some stunning effects. Let's just go into the section. Let's throw that little image we had before, perhaps. I'm going to make it CSS parallax. So it stays where it is, or fixed background, if you will. So when I scroll up the page, it'll say where it is. Great. Let's save our changes now. And exit the Visual Builder. And let's roll down. Here's our little spaceship. We roll back up. We can stop it there. We can roll over it. Click the call to action. Do whatever you want. Continue rolling. It does the other way. So there's a little overview of scroll effects. Like I say, you can be really subtle or you can go absolutely stupid and have some crazy effects going on like this. That's really going to get people's attention. Nice little thing to have on your site. And that's a great little feature to have built into the Divi theme. So I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up, ring the bell, comment, share, and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Don't forget, if you have any questions, pop them down below the video. I'll do my best to answer them for you or make a little demo video just like this one. Once again, this has been Jamie from System22 and WebDesignAndTechTips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.